I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on solving inequalities. In this video, we will learn techniques to solve inequality which involve two absolute functions as given in this question. We need to solve the inequality absolute value of 4 minus x less than or equal to absolute value of 3 minus 2x. You will see such question in many test papers including Cambridge International Examinations. So I have actually taken this question from Cambridge International Examination AS level. So here is question number two which we are going to solve in this particular video. Now let us see how to really solve these questions easily. Now we'll talk about two strategies. One is uh, Let's say, let me write down the strategies here. So we'll have two strategies. Strategy one is to understand that these are always positive values, right? So we are positive values on both sides. So in that case, we can square both sides then solve. So that is the strategy which we can adopt. That is strategy number one. Let me also mention the second strategy. Strategy number two is basically to redefine absolute function then solve in different intervals. You should remember that absolute value of x minus a is basically equal to positive value of x minus a for x greater than or equal to a and it is negative of x minus a when x is less than a. So that is how we redefine and then we solve in intervals. So in this case, minus infinity to a and then from a to infinity. So that is how you should be solving. So let's adopt the first strategy to solve this particular question. And we can only do it because both sides are always positive, right? So when we are saying that absolute value of 4 minus x has to be less than or equal to absolute value of 3 minus 2x, we could actually also say that 4 minus x whole square is less than or equal to 3 minus 2x whole square. You get the idea. That is what we are trying to say, right? Both are positive. So the squares will also follow the strategy, correct? Now, I actually prefer to write x first, and since we have a square here, I could actually write this as x minus 4 whole square is less than or equal to 2x minus 3 whole square. That's one and the same thing. We could do all this only because there's a square and it makes it positive, right? So minus square is positive square. Now, I will use difference of squares so you can actually expand and then simplify. You could do this. You could also use this. If I have a square minus b square, I could always write this as a plus b times a minus b, correct? So that helps to solve in a much simpler way. So taking this on the right side, I can get 0 less than or equal to 2x minus 3 whole square minus x minus 4 whole square. Now I'll use a square minus b square, right? So we'll factor this. So, so we get two factors. One is a plus b, that is we have to add these two. So we get 2x minus 3 plus x minus 4. And the other factor is a minus b, which is 2x minus 3, negative x. Negative of negative 4 becomes positive 4, clear? So we have 0 is less than or equal to 2x plus x is 3x and then minus 3 and minus 4 is minus 7. Here we get 
2x minus x is x and uh, minus 3 uh, plus 4 is plus 1. So we get this kind of a factor. Now you could do intervals and then solve. However, here is another important technique. Now what we have here, we want this term to be greater than 0. Now, that is a parabola with two zeros, right? So let me sketch this parabola. So we'll sketch it here approximately. So we have two zeros. This is 0 at x equals to minus 1. This is 0 at x equals to 7 over 3. So 7 over 3 is kind of 2 point something. So and this parabola opens upwards. We could have a parabola which could be kind of like this. Where this 0 here is at minus 1. The other 0 is at 7 over 3. We want something which is greater than or equal to. So we can include these zeros, right? So we can include these zeros and our interval is going to be this. Is that clear? And so we get our solution which is the value of x belongs to real numbers where x is what? Is less than equal to minus 1, right? Or x is greater than equal to 7 over 3. Is that clear, right? So you could write like this. You could also write it in a different format, which is like from minus infinity to minus 1, where minus 1 is included, a union from 7 over 3 to infinity. You can never include infinity. Is that clear? So this is how you'll do using strategy number 1. Now we'll solve the same question using the definition of uh, absolute function and this actually is the general way of doing it. Now strategy one was special since both sides are positive we could really square and solve right. I hope you also appreciate this step so without expanding we kind of factored it. Okay let's move on and see the second strategy. We'll actually write absolute functions as piecewise functions and then solve. So we have here absolute value of 4 minus x. This can be written as 4 minus x. When x is, so when is it positive? It is actually positive when x is less than equal to 4, right? So it, is, it remains same. So when x is less than equal to 4, it is positive, right? And this is going to be the negative value when x is greater than 4. Clear? The other one, which is absolute value of 3 minus 2x, will be equal to the positive value, 3 minus 2x, when x is less than 3 by 2. Correct? However, the negative value of this, when x is, will use greater than 3 by 2. Right. So we could use a equal to sign anywhere. So let's use it in this place. Okay. Now, let us see how to solve within these intervals. So when, while we were doing strategy 1, we actually flipped that. It is easier to do work like this. But how we could do in this fashion also, right? Okay. So we basically uh, solve this in three different intervals. Intervals being, let's uh, use this line. When x is less than or equal to 3 by 2, let's say this is uh, from minus infinity to 3 by 2. And then we have from 3 by 2 to 4. Now, you could include 3 by 2 into, let's say, less than we have included. So let's include it here. For 3 by 2 to 4, uh, we will include it here. And then let's write 4 to infinity here. Okay. So in the first case, when we are on the left side, that is to say, 
we are working on less than 3 by 2. So in that case, we are going to use uh, 4 minus x and in this case, 3 minus 2x, right? So we have here 4 minus x is less than or equal to 3 minus 2x. Let's solve this. Taking 2x to this side, we get 2x minus x is less than or equals to 3 minus 4. And that gives you x is less than or equal to minus 1. So that is one of our solutions, right? x less than minus 1. It happens to be in this particular interval. Now in the second case, when we are talking about greater than 3 by 2, so greater than 3 by 2, this value is negative. However, greater than 3 by 2, but less than 4, we still have 4 minus x on this side. So we have 4 minus x is less than or equal to. So here we are going to use minus 3 plus 2x, right? Taking x to this side, 3 to this side, we get 4 plus 3 is less than or equal to 2x plus x, or 7 is less than or equal to 3x, or we say x is greater than 7 over 3. So when we say x is greater than 7 over 3, in that case, if you're looking at the number line, let's say we have a number line here, right? So on this number line, uh, let's call this point as uh, 3 by 2, right? Here we have 4. Okay, so somewhere here we'll have 0. And then we have minus 1 here, right? So we'll include minus 1 and take the solution on the left side. Now we are saying it is greater than 7 over 3. So somewhere here is, let us say, 7 over 3, right? So it's greater than, x is greater than 7 over 3. But we are including only this interval. So from here to this place, including this, and this is also included. So that is the solution. Now let's look into the last part when we are on the right side then both are negative. So we have here minus 4 plus x is less than or equal to and here we have uh, we're talking about interval from 4 to greater than 3 by 2 so it is this negative portion so it is negative 3 plus 2x. So taking x on this side what do we get? We get 3 on this side so we get minus 4 plus 3 greater than or equal to 2x plus x or we get 3x is greater than or equal to and here we get minus 1 or we get x is greater than or equal to minus 1 over 3. That means if you solve on this side then in that case we are getting all the values. Correct? For all the values. So, so here we get a solution greater than 4 all of them. Right? So that is how we get our solution. So this point here is 7 over 3. So we get exactly the same solution which we got earlier. However, we have to think a lot about these intervals and then do it. So this is kind of tricky. Right? So we did get a solution which is from minus infinity to minus 1 which is included union from 7 over 3 to infinity. Right? So that is how we could solve it using these three intervals. So I hope that makes sense, right? So a few things which you understand is our strategy to rewrite in this fashion, that is absolute value of x minus 4 less than or equal to absolute value of 2x minus 3 is also a good strategy. That avoids some confusion here because normally you always see function where x is written first, right? Um, that is one thing. Second, if both sides are positive, we could square both sides and then solve as we used in strategy one. That is faster and uh, uh, more efficient. So I hope that helps. However, strategy two is a general strategy which can be used anytime. If you have any questions, feel free to write your comments, share your questions, and if you like and subscribe to my videos, that'll be great. Thanks for your time and all the best.